You mentioned to me offline that Ethereum is going to be the coin with the next big run. Tell us about that. Well, as you know, you're an expert on tracking gold and silver and the phenomena that when we get into a run, when gold goes to that 50 day moving average and it goes up 15, 20 percent, silver all of a sudden surges 30 yeah. uh, percent. And so Ethereum is much like uh, silver is to gold, Ethereum to Bitcoin. Bitcoin makes the big charge and all of a sudden Ethereum explodes on the upside. And that's what we're happy in the sweet spot. The biggest challenge that we've had is all the all these kids with GPU chips for gaming uh, start mining Ethereum. So we actually get less coins. So our prices are up dramatically from a year ago. But the machines that used to produce 300 big, uh, Ethereum a day uh, when Ethereum was $300 are now producing 80 a day. But the price is up dramatically more. Uh, so actually our net revenue or gross revenue is higher. But I think it's because all these gamers. So think of this, you know, the gamers are in crypto all over the world. And gaming as a whole is a $600 billion business. A limited supply. That is the difference between Ethereum and Bitcoin. Are you not concerned that, like you said, you've got people producing Ethereum on other platforms, perhaps another miner would come in where perhaps you would ramp up supply as well yourself? Do you, would, would, are you not concerned that that fundamental, that the, the demand supply fundamentals of Ethereum may weigh down in the price in the future? What do you think? No, I think the biggest thing in the fear that's been now for four years is that we're going to, uh, Ethereum is going to go from proof of work, which is mining and validating the encryption, to a proof of stake. Uh, it hasn't happened. Uh, every upgrade, all it does is shrink the supply outside but it doesn't stop the demand and, and people mining for it. It's actually much more decentralized around the world than Bitcoin miners are. And I think it's interesting because they call the hashing power difficulty. It's gone to new highs as Bitcoin has it. So I, I think that investors have to recognize Ethereum is a smart contract. Ethereum has many more uses the way silver does. Silver, 20% of demand for silver is for solar energy. So it has a green footprint. It's also for uh, viruses can't live on silver. Uh, it has all these more medical uses, et cetera. So the same thing with Ethereum. Ethereum yeah. is used for DeFi, for NFTs. So it's a much import, more important backbone for growth in blockchain. What are some of the uses for Bitcoin then? Store of value. Uh, the ability to, if, if there's an earthquake in, in Mexico uh, for a cleaning lady, she has to go down to Western Union and on that $500 she's going to try to send, it's not going to immediately get to her family. She's going to get scraped for about $100 off the top. Bitcoin is done in, in a minute and they can send the money and they can convert it and she can help their family out. So remittance uh, between developed nations and, and uh, developing nations, I think that's a classic of why Bitcoin's a superior way of moving money. People my generation, most most of my friends don't hold a gold. They've got a lot of Ethereum. They've got cryptos as a store of value. They've got stocks. They've got maybe some, some maybe some bonds, but very few people I know buy gold. Point is, obviously there are younger people who buy gold, but they're not in the majority. If this generation grows up to primarily hold cryptos, who's going to be holding gold in 50 years? People that love beautiful gold jewelry, and that's never going to go away uh, because you can wear your jewelry when I mean, you think of India, uh, Indian women have six times the amount of gold in Fort Knox in the vault and they wear it and it's portable wealth. So I think the bigger issue is that where's the portable wealth going to be? I think as the push by governments to get rid of paper money so that they, they, they can monitor everything. Therefore, the cash won't be bare. It'll only be Bitcoin, Ethereum and it'll be gold. So I don't think gold's going to go away because people want to be able to have what's a private asset. Very important concept. Who hates it the most? The more socialist the country, more controlling of the country, of the citizens, of right down to human rights. Uh, China kicks everyone out because they're coming with their own digital money. Uh, you can see this evolving, but crypto is too big. It's just a global phenomenon. When I wear a shirt like this, David, I get people to tell me all about Ethereum and Bitcoin. I wear gold and go gold. And it's like, you know, who's he? Who cares? So it's interesting that uh, how th this ecosystem around the world is much more caught up with blockchain and crypto money. What should you be hodling? Gold, Bitcoin, Ethereum, 
I guess it depends on who you are, right? Can you can you help us out here? If I were if I were well, let's say if I were a millennial, I'm you know I, I've still got some years to me before retirement. What should I be hodling versus somebody who's already entering their retirement ages? If you're a, an older investor or a conservative mindset, clearly gold. Gold is just a great trade and it's lagged the markets uh, on a relative basis for the money printing. And I think it should have a projectile potential for $3,000 in a short, short period here. Uh, but if you're an aggressive investor and you're younger, yeah, owning Bitcoin and owning Ethereum, or to make it simple, you can own Hive and you get both. Let's talk about Hive for a little bit more before we move on to the coins. Now, you mentioned that you have been very profitable this year. Tell me how you did that. I, I assume both your Obviously, you know, cryptos have done a nice run, so that's contributed Ethereum. to your profits. What about the costs? How are you able to keep costs down? When you, if you converted our Ethereum into Bitcoin, our cost is about $3,000 a Bitcoin if you did that conversion. So what does that mean? It means in the past 12 months, Ethereum has outperformed Bitcoin. We're the only Ethereum producers. We're the biggest hodlers. And uh, what do you think that means? Uh, we, if you did that conversion for all the Bitcoin fanatics, we are producing something like today, 13 and a half Bitcoins a day. Uh, what we are doing is that we're upgrading our Ethereum facilities with the best NVIDIA chips, and we're expanding our Bitcoin production. We hit one exahash like we said we would in August. Uh, we expect another exahash of Bitcoin mining by Christmas, and then another one by March. So I think that uh, the combination of why we're the most profitable is because we mine Ethereum and Bitcoin. What about electricity costs? I mean, as you expand your operations, would you not expect fixed costs to go up? Tell us about that side of the operations. Absolutely. Uh, you see that pressure point, unless you're building your own facility like we're doing in New Brunswick, uh, that's 30 megawatts going to 50 megawatts to 70 megawatts, and we're expanding Bowdoin by another 10 megawatts. Uh, we've been invited into a, a, a sort of consortium to do 200 megawatts. But for us, it's more difficult, David, because we've really stayed focused on being the only green, clean miner. Uh, so we only at this stage use geothermal and hydroelectricity. Uh, we haven't used solar. Uh, we haven't used wind. But we've used in, in, in cool jurisdictions like Sweden and Iceland and Canada. Why is it important for you to operate in a jurisdiction where renewable energy is abundant. I mean, I'm just thinking, wouldn't it be more mobile or perhaps even cheaper to operate anywhere else where you're just using regular petroleum or uh, electricity from other fossil fuel sources? No, I, I don't think so. I, and, and you can get great contracts like, and stable energy. Uh, in Sweden, in fact, we use the hedging market and we locked in two cents costs. Uh, that's the, the lowest in the world. Of all the crypto mining companies, there's no one there that can say they got two cent electricity that's green in particular. So it, it's, I think we're in a very sort of sweet spot that way, but it's becoming more difficult uh, in, in finding good green, clean uh, operations. One of the most difficult provinces is, is, is Quebec. Uh, and what I'm told is the aluminum uh, lobbyist groups have planted all this FUD, uh, fear and uncertainty and, and basically uh, a, a distrust for anything that's Bitcoin mining because they're worried about electricity going going to hurt them. But that's just FUD. There's just so much of surplus electricity that, that Quebec sells into the U.S. Uh, and, and they are treating Bitcoin mining uh, with, a, with a very old school mindset.